So uh, I have prepared some uh, lecture notes uh, that uh, I'll send uh, to the organizer, uh, and I will put them online on the on the on the website of the conf of the school. Uh, so um, yeah, I'll follow mainly those. Uh, I will follow follow pieces of those. Uh, so you should feel free to to keep that in mind and to look there. Um, an outline uh, of, uh, of what we're going to do is, uh, is the following. The first, uh, I, will, uh, uh, I will start really from basics, uh, and uh, we'll do the motivation for inflation. Uh, this will highlight what, is, what are called the standard problems of the Big Bang, uh, standard Big Bang theory. And then uh, uh, I will not discuss about, uh, much about the standard models of inflation, but I will discuss uh, something that is called uh, the effective field theory of inflation. Which is a, a, a different way of uh, thinking about inflation than what people used to do for, for the bit the first 20 years since the beginning of inflation, and it is uh, the ideal way to connect uh, observation and theory. So I will explain that. And uh, in the, then we will move to one of the most uh, promising observational signal of inflation, which is non-Gaussianities. Then it will do the power spectrum, so we will go to higher order correlation functions here. And then, uh, uh, time permitted, uh, I will t uh, we'll, we'll change a bit topics. While this is a, a topic which is very, very connected to observations, now we'll talk about something here which is kind of more theoretical, but which has a very interesting connection to quantum gravity, the quantum mechanics of gravity, which is eternal inflation. OK, so this is the outline. Uh, uh, please feel free to ask questions. The, even a very stupid question is very welcome. So if the question is easy, maybe I know the answer. If it's hard, I don't know the answer. So feel free to ask as many questions as you want. And also, if my handwriting doesn't get good uh, and becomes hard to read, uh, please let me know. I'm aware that uh, I don't write uh, very beautifully, pretty clear. So feel free to, uh, to say just, I don't understand that, that, that word, OK? OK, let's start uh, by uh, setting up the problem. So we do the motivation for inflation. And the uh, uh, okay. motivation. And um, uh, in order to set the stage, uh, let's, this, let's uh, uh, set up the stage with the described F FRW metric or the FRW cosmology. Uh, this morning you already saw that the metric uh, for FRW can be written uh, in the following form. Now. Uh, what I will write down now is the generic metric for FRW. What we see in the current universe is uh, a part that the universe is very well described by it in a particular me FRW metric, which is the one which is flat. But it's a bit one, of the, one of the problem, uh, one of the mysteries that inflation tries to solve is why uh, of all the FRW universe uh, we end up with the flat one. So here I'll write down the metric, the FRW metric, the one which is uh, Generic, the most generic, generic uh, uh, isotropic rotational invariant space, which is the one uh, which, uh, in principle, is, is uniformly curved. It looks like. OK, so this is the, the metric of a sphere times a, a radial coordinate, r square. And here there is a, a, a radial distance, which, however, depends on this factor, which is uh, uh, associated to the curvature uh, of the universe. If uh, kappa equals 0, this is a flat universe. If kappa equals uh, plus 1, um, we have a, a, closed, a spherical universe. And if kappa is minus 1, we have an hyperbolic universe. Uh, you can see that the metric of FRW is the one of a uh, 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 the one that, on the special part, uh, represents uh, this uh, either flat or, or spherical or, or hyperbolic uh, special surface. 
and the time part uh, is pretty simple, but as time goes on, uh, this uh, special surface is rescaled by a scale factor, which is only a function of time. So as time goes on, uh, whatever is the special surface is, uh, gets rescaled. Um, so it's a pretty simple uh, universe. Uh, since uh, this is activity, we can change coordinates, so I'll do it now. So ah, one, one important quantity to, to, to point out is the Hubble rate, which is uh, a dot over A. It's a uh, typical scale for doubling uh, the scale factor. OK. Let me change. Um, in order to highlight, highlight uh, you, you can see that if the universe is described by this kind of metric, uh, it, 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 naively, it, are, it will have some problems. And uh, in order to highlight this problem, let me change coordinates. So the same metric can be written as minus dt squared plus a square of t. Uh, is it visible, or should I write larger or smaller? Make yes or no, so I can see. A little higher. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, please feel free. So I, I don't write yes. Okay. Okay. Thank. You. Okay. So uh, let's just not use this part. Okay. Then. Uh, um, okay. By changing coordinate, uh, we can write the metric as minus dt square plus uh, a square d k plus a function s uh, kappa uh, this radial coordinate k square times again the um, yeah, d theta square plus d theta okay where this uh, function here, as kappa, is nothing but r square as a function of chi, which we call it s kappa of chi square. And uh, it's equal to uh, sin h uh, chi if kappa is minus 1. Uh, it's equal to chi square if kappa is equal to 0 and is equal to sine of chi if kappa is equal to plus 1. And uh, what I want to do now is to change also coordinates in time. So you see that chi now plays the roles of a, ra of a radius because uh, the radial distance is just uh, d chi. Okay? And uh, it's useful to change uh, coordinates in time to define conformal time. tau, which is the integral up to tau in of dt over a of t. Okay? So that uh, if you do that, uh, the metric now becomes uh, this thing. Uh, there is uh, a square of tau times minus d tau square plus this stuff here. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Yes, very good. Thank you. Eh? Thanks. I did it on purpose eh? to see if we... <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, okay. Yes, please, uh, whenever you see it, eh, it's good. Okay, now in these coordinates, uh, once the metric is written this way, it's very easy to solve uh, the following question, which is, uh, what is a uh, trajectory of light? which is uh, the solution to the equation ds squared equals 0, which means, clearly means that uh, the solution is chi. If you, start, uh, if you take a geodesic that starts from the origin, the chi is equal to plus or minus tau plus some constant. Okay. Which means that uh, uh, light uh, in these uh, coordinates travels at 45 degrees. Uh, uh, that is, if, you, if I do uh, a light um, space light diagram, where here I put conformal time tau, and here coordinate uh, space chi. Then uh, we can draw 
45 degree lines here, uh, which represent trajectory of light, uh, which, uh, which are called like cone. And if you consider a, a, a certain space-time event O here, this region here is the future of O. Here is the past of O. And here, uh, this region here is uh, the light-like, uh, the space-like region. La a signal from home from O cannot reach these, uh, these points because it would travel faster than light. Now, it is interesting to notice that uh, if we declare, if uh, uh, the universe started uh, at some time uh, ti, that is, uh, there is no past in the universe earlier than some time ti, then uh, uh, there is a maximum distance uh, a, a particle could have traveled by the time, uh, uh, w by the time t, starting from the time ti to the time t, simply because uh, uh, nothing can go faster than light. This is called the particle horizon. So particle horizon is uh, the co maximum co-moving distance that uh, uh, a signal of light or any signal could have traveled by the time t if the universe started at the time ti. Uh, and uh, by solving that equation, it, is, it, is, it means simply that the particle horizon at time tau is nothing but uh, tau minus tau initial, or the integral by the definition of the conformal time, the integral from t initial to t of dt prime over a of t prime. Notice that this is a, a co-moving this coordinate. Now, if you ask, uh, this is a co-moving coordinate, this guy here. If you ask what is the geodesic distance between two points, uh, this defines the physical particle horizon, d, d t tau, which is uh, a of tau times the, the, the distance. You could have tried. Okay. So the fact that the universe begins uh, implies the existence of uh, a, an horizon. And this will be crucial for the motivation of inflation, as we're going to see very soon. OK, since we're here, let me define another concept that uh, it might be useful for the last part of the, of the, co of the course of the lectures, which is the, event, the concept of event horizon. OK, this is something that happens if uh, we, think we, we assume that the universe ends at some point. Or uh, sometimes, depending on the dynamics of the, of the universe itself, this ending point could be even at infinite time. Yes? No. But if uh, there is some, uh, uh, if the universe ends by some time, then the, clearly there is a, uh, if uh, a particle, a, 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 if we send a signal from some point uh, a, a certain time, there's a maximum distance uh, light can travel before reaching the end of time. This, this uh, maximum distance, which is time dependent, uh, and it becomes shorter and shorter as, as, as the closer you get to the end of the, of the time, is called event horizon. And um, so this, the moving distance for which two points at a certain time tau, farther than this distance here, cannot talk to each other any longer, is uh, just uh, very similar to these relations, is how much conformal time is left to the end of the universe. And uh, it has a similar formula like this. So, okay. So the the event horizon is uh, the concept that appears, for example, in black hole, is Schwarzschild black hole. Okay, it's the same kind of uh, phenomenon, which is very different from the particle horizons, which is uh, associated with the fact that there is a beginning of time. Um, okay. Now. It's very, uh, it's quite intuitive that see, if the universe starts at some time, uh, there is this kind of particle horizon. But we see that in order to determine the size of the horizon itself, uh, a, the scale factor A, um, we must integrate over the scale factor A. And so we, know, we need to know this, the, the scale factor A as a function of time. So while uh, the, the, 
this, uh, this formula are a kinematic form that is tells you that given a metric, uh, we can solve and get the horizon, uh, the size of the horizon. In order to determine precisely what quantitative is the size of the horizon, we need to, know, to study the evolution of A, which is a dynamical question, okay? We, ha we need to know what, how, the, how the metric evolves. This is given by Einstein equation, okay? How the metric evolves. And these are nothing less than Einstein equation. Which uh, uh, you all know that are written as g mu nu equal t mu nu over uh, m plus square. Okay, in this class, I will always neglect pi's okay, and twos. Uh, homework, uh, okay, you do the fixed step. Um, at least for the, for the part that are more uh, uh, standard, okay? Now, in this particular metric, which is the FRW metric, which is uh, uh, homogeneous and isotropic, T mu nu can take the follow, must take the following form. T mu nu must be, can, can be always brought into the a diagonal form where the zero, zero component is rho, and then we have minus p, minus p, minus p, and the rest, all the rest is zero. Okay? So these, uh, in principle, 10 different equations reduced to just two non-trivial equations, which uh, um, we can write uh, in the following way. Ah, it's okay, thank you, thank you. No, but it was fine. It, <laughs> yes, sir, don't worry. This is much cleaner than the one I'm used to. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Eh? Uh, so th those 10 equations become these two, which is h square equal uh, the Hubble rate, uh, which is, uh, I remind you, is a dot over a and then equal square equal 1 over 3 m plus, m plus square rho minus kappa over a square and uh, h dot plus h square equal a double dot over a which is equal to minus one sixth rho plus three p okay and uh, so the first equation is called the Friedman is, is the famous Friedman equation and the second tells you how h is the question about the acceleration of A. In order, these equations can be combined to give this, which, to, since uh, zero is equal to gram mu equal g mu nu, this is the so-called Bianchi identity. Okay, this, these equations can be, can be combined to give you d rho and dt, how much the energy density changes with time uh, is equal is equal to minus this quantity, rho plus 3 plus p. So instead of solving these two equations, one can substitute this with this, which tells you how much uh, energy deals with time is proportional to the expansion of the universe, which makes a lot of sense, but also proportionally to p itself, because if there is non-zero pressure, as the universe expands, the work is being done to, to push the universe at the expansion by the pressure, and so energy is being lost. And this, uh, this is a question that, that, that regulates that. So this is a, a, the general relativistic uh, generalization of the energy conservation equation. Okay, now, in order to, to speed up uh, the treatment, uh, we, and, uh, we, we can define uh, an equation of state for meta, which uh, is a very useful concept because many interesting meta satisfy this, uh, this property. That is, uh, um, we, we, for the rest of this class, we'll take that the pressure is equal to some uh, uh, a constant proportionality that we call W times rho. W is called the, the, the equation of state, and we take it to be time independent, okay? So simple, uh, typical things uh, are, for example, uh, okay, so for example, meta, uh, non-relativistic meta, has uh, 
W equals zero, and instead the ultra relativistic matter is W equal a perle. Okay. Uh, yes? Okay. So if uh, now if you have this, uh, you can solve uh, uh, for the scale factor. And you get, uh, once you have this, uh, you can remove P for, for, uh, for rho, and then you have two equations, one for A and one for rho, and you can solve them. And you can find that uh, A, I will not, that, so rho, first of all, from this equation, if uh, this is constant, rho is pro evolves with time like e to the minus 3 times 1 plus w. Okay, so rho is proportional to this. And then plug into the equation, Friedman equation, we can solve for, uh, for A. And, uh, for example, just for kappa equals zero, we get that uh, A goes like T to the two over uh, three, one plus W, if W is different from one, or E to the H T, if W, sorry, W different from minus one, if W is equal to minus one. So you see that uh, if uh, the universe is dominated by some matter with constant equation of state, uh, different from minus one, the scale factor evolves uh, like a simple power law like this one. This, if instead uh, w is equal to minus one, uh, it is uh, uh, an exponential solution like this. In particular, this kind of FRW, FRW solution is called, uh, as a particular name of the city space time. Notice that W equal minus one is very similar, is P equal minus rho, which, which is very similar to what the cosmological constant, is, is, is exactly what the cosmological constant uh, does. The equation of state of a cosmological constant. Okay, now in general in the universe uh, there are, uh, so in particular you see here that again, that uh, uh, for example rho meta goes like one over a cube, which makes a lot of sense, non relativistic matter, and the rho uh, ultra, -relativistic, ultra relativistic matter, which is usually called the radiation, reaches faster by 1 over a to the fourth, because uh, not only the volume dilutes, but also the wavelength of the photons, for example, gets longer, and so the energy goes, uh, uh, goes away faster by 1 power of a. Okay, before addressing we're almost done uh, to be ready to address the problems uh, of cosmology, of standard Big Bang cosmology. The only thing uh, we're missing uh, is uh, this so-called uh, relative uh, energy densities. No, no, no. It's okay, it's okay, thank you. No, no, done, done. <laughs> You're too kind, it's okay. Okay, so now let's define Thank you, thank you. Uh, so let's define, uh, um, so now if uh, there are many components, okay, for example, rho will be the sum over all the rho i and same pressure will be the sum over all the pressures of each component. And each component will have its own equation of state, which is pi over rho i. Okay, we can define, uh, for example, the, uh, it, the present time energy fraction of component i at present, and here the, 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 the zero part uh, means uh, at present, the zero subscript, as uh, the energy density of the component i at present divided something that is called the critical energy density at uh, zero, at present time, where the critical energy density is such that uh, the critical energy density is uh, the energy density that would be needed uh, in the universe if, uh, to make it expand with, with the present Hubble rate, with Hubble, if uh, that there was only one kind of matter with that energy density, okay? So in particular, H, H0 square, the present uh, Hubble rate is uh, equal to rho critical zero over three M plus square. So, it, this is a present or in generic time uh, is a function of time. So, rho critical is this function of time. 
Okay. Now, uh, in particular, this allows to define uh, the curvature fraction of the universe, omega k and zero, to be analogously, you can see that in the Friedman equation, uh, curvature sits almost like, like if it was a matter. In particular, notice that uh, if a matter has some constant equation state, for example, it he, he behaves with time uh, as a simple power law of, uh, of the scale factor, a to the three, one plus w. So you see that this term is very similar to this term. So we can think of the curvature as an energy component of the universe, homogeneous, completely homogeneous, which is uh, equal to minus k over a square at present time times Hubble zero square. OK. These formulas can be generalized at uh, different times, uh, at all times. So omega i is rho i over rho critical. And omega kappa, the curvature is minus kappa over a square a square. And the sum over all omega i plus omega kappa is equal to zero by definition. So each omega represents the fractional contribution of a certain component i to the energy density of the universe. OK, so these are the standard uh, friedman robertson walker formulas that uh, are, uh, allows us to, to illustrate uh, the, um, the problems that we see the universe faces if uh, it is uh, in this kind of state. In fact, uh, OK, now let me, uh, I'm going to show you that uh, if uh, the universe is always dominated by some normal kind of matter, like uh, uh, non-relativistic matter or radiation, uh, then uh, in order to have evolved uh, to the present state, uh, it would have been, uh, it should have been uh, in the past uh, in a very, very peculiar state. Now, you have to be very careful. And this uh, is, a, is a source of discomfort because we don't want, in general, to, to, we feel uncomfortable in declaring that the universe started in a very peculiar state. However, notice that this is a, a very different question than what uh, physicists normally address. In general, physics uh, is, uh, is it tries to address questions about dynamics. Given a certain initial state that experimentally sets, sets, up, sets up for you, the physics in general predicts the dynamics, the evolution of that state into the future. Here, we are trying to do something different. We, are, we know the dynamics, but we are trying to, to, if, to, to learn something about the dynamics by imposing that the, the initial state is something that we feel comfortable with. Now, this is, uh, again, uh, is, goes a bit uh, beyond uh, the standard physics and almost reaches philosophy. So you have to be clear careful uh, that uh, it's, um, what I'm going to show now, the problems, are, are uh, about this initial state. And we don't have yet, yet uh, in physics a very uh, satisfying way of talking about initial states. So it could be that there are some deeper reasons uh, uh, that for, for to decide the initial states of the universe that uh, are, uh, will be in conflict with what I'm going to say. But uh, you will see it is uh, very reasonable. So what we're going to show is that uh, if uh, the universe is like this now and it was always dominated by some normal matter, then the universe had to, study, to start in a very peculiar state. This uh, will motivate us, us the introduction of inflation, which will not do nothing else than doing the following. Take a random generic state and end up in this peculiar state from which uh, the standard matter universe evolves. So it makes the, the peculiar state that we seem to have at the beginning of the universe just uh, an attractor ht, h dot is equal to zero, so h is constant. So w will not be exactly equal to minus one here because there is a bit of kinetic energy. This is not exactly flat, uh, it just rolls a bit. Uh, and by rolling uh, at some point, uh, phi will reach the end uh, of this region and inflation will end. Uh, so in this way, the, the phase of inflation will be something that precedes the other phases of the universe. So this quantity will not be exactly zero for some sort of inflation is this ratio and must be much less than one. Uh, notice that uh, the equation of motion for the scalar field so a solution like this uh, makes the job. Now we have to see if uh, we start with a very small velocity, do we stay with a very small velocity? Because we're seeing, just seeing that if the velocity is small, then uh, we have w less than minus 1. But maybe this is a very unstable point of the solution. Maybe the velocity kicks in uh, and, and kills uh, the, this kind of solution. In fact, uh, if there wasn't gravity, you would imagine that uh, 
if you put a, it's got a field stuck on top of a potential, no matter how, non, uh, how flat the potential, the potential is, uh, the field will accelerate as soon as you get the energy very large. So the kinetic energy will be very large. So here gravity plays a crucial role because like a friction. So in fact, if you take the Clan Gordon equation, for this kind of solution becomes phi double dot plus 3h phi dot plus v uh, prime of phi equals zero. Now this equation is the equation of a particle moving down a potential, one dimensional particle moving down a potential, with however some friction. As you remember, uh, in this kind of equ differential equation, there is the asymptotic solution, which is uh, when uh, the, the particle reaches the asymptotic velocity, which is phi dot in this case, uh, at, so uh, there is an attractor solution, attractor asymptotic solution, which, where phi dot is equal to v prime over 3h. In order to be at, on the attractor, Uh, we need uh, this phi dot to be negligible with respect to this. So we need phi double dot over 3h phi dot much less than 1. This is what it means to be in the attractor. This parameter goes under the name of eta, which if you apply back uh, the, the, the friedman roberts equation, this uh, becomes, uh, um, okay, it's related to phi double dot. Let me, let me just, double dot. Let, let me just write it in this way. So much less than one. So we see that we found two conditions uh, in order for inflation to give uh, the kind of expansion of the universe that we want. One uh, is this Laurel parameter to be much less than one. This uh, gives, guarantees us that uh, uh, the universe expands with w less than minus one. But we want uh, not only that the universe expands with this rate, but we want also that this uh, kind of expansion is an attractor mechanism. Because if it is not an attractor, we're going to be back to the same problem. Why the universe started inflating that way? So we want it to be a, an attractor solution. And you can see from this equation that it screams, uh, tells you that it's really an attractor. Inflation is an attractor. There's a basin of attraction for the, attract for the attractor. And to be in the attractor, it requires this parameter, this other sort of parameter, uh, to be small. Once you are, is it smaller, you, 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 are, um, you are on the attractor for sufficient time. So these two, so not only inflation provides this phase of acceleration of the universe that we like, but also does it in a, in a way which is an attractor solution. This is crucial, okay? It's, it's a fantastic thing of inflation that the kind of expansion that we want is actually the kind of expansion that we are attracted to. So it's just perfect. Okay. Uh, do we have another five minutes or? Yeah, okay, just five minutes. Let me, so this phase, we know that now, if these two conditions are satisfied, we're going to have w equal minus 1. So we're going to solve uh, this problem. But of course, we're not going to solve it, uh, the rise and the curvature problem, if inflation lasts a second. Okay? There is uh, an, an amount of time that it lasts. And uh, let me just conclude uh, by, by telling you how long inflation is to last in order to fix the problems. Okay. So we last uh, as long as this condition is satisfied, which for a potential like this, uh, the field will roll, roll, roll in this limiting velocity. At some point, however, uh, the eta condition will be violated because the, the potential will be too steep to, to hold that, that, that condition. And then uh, we, we take the point of view that inf the inflation decays, uh, produces radiation, and inflation ends. In particular, the acceleration of the universe, W equal minus one, phase ends. And the standard primary universal work in cosmology begins. OK, how much uh, we define uh, the duration of inflation, of inflation, with how much the universe expanded, which is the number of foldings number of e foldings of expansion, which is, uh, so 
the number of default of expansion, depending on the initial condition according to where, where inflation started, where you start, uh, where you put the potential, is the logarithmic of a end of inflation over a initial, or uh, the number of e-folding, if you start from some little phi, is the logarithmic of how much the, of the rate of the scale factor at the end of inflation over the scale factor at the beginning. Why we take the log? Because for W over the minus one, solution is, is as follows with time, so it's convenient to take the log. This goes like the integral in, of the T of H, but uh, by one can change coordinates. Instead of the T, one can take the phi and divide by phi dot. Okay. Okay, so this is a, so one can just perform this integral on the trajectory and decide how much inflation, how much, how much the universe expands during inflation with W over the minus one. Okay, how much expansion do you need to fix the problem? So let's look at the curvature problem. So during inflation, omega k is minus k over a square a square. A very generic solution tells you that the beginning of inflation, omega k, let's say, is over the one, or a bit smaller than one, but not particularly small. In inflation, a, during the inflation phase, A goes like e to the ht, and this is constant. So this omega k decreases a lot, OK? Now, so omega k at the end of inflation is omega k at the beginning times A initial square over A n square, OK? Which is a, if this is over the one, it is just this number, which is e to the minus two, the number of infoldings. OK. Now, in the end of inflation, omega k has become very, very small. So, the tra so omega k as a function of time, as a function of time, if this is omega k, and this is the t of the end of inflation, omega k goes towards 0. And then uh, when inflation ends, it starts growing, uh, like in the standard FRW uh, cosmology. So we would like that the end point uh, to be low enough uh, to accumulate, for example, BBN, which is omega k 10 to minus 22, or uh, Planck scale, minus 18, uh, 10 to minus 63, whatever you want. So you want uh, this number, e to the minus 2 any, to be smaller than 10 to minus 10, 22, say. So you want any bigger than uh, tens. Typical numbers are of order 20, but more take the, the universe started the high temperature enough of order 60. 60 foldings are the typical numbers. OK. This same number of the folding also fixes the, uh, the, the horizon problem. OK. And this is the last thing I say. So in order to fix the horizon problem, remember that the horizon problem in a sharper version uh, was uh, telling that if this was the same b, and this is what we see now. The problem is that, uh, uh, naively, uh, regions had only this, hori this horizon, and uh, instead they were homogeneous on this scale. So what we want to do, we want to make uh, the, the true horizon. This is, uh, uh, this is the, uh, uh, what we see now. So this is the amount, of, the amount of distance, which is about the 1 over Hubble, that light has traveled from the time of the CMB to us. So this is the region we can see, because uh, the light in the same is emitted a certain time and it reached to us. It traveled for the time from now to when the universe was 300,000 years old. And you can compute how much this distance is one up time, more or less. So this, uh, this instance we know. And we, we need to ask that the horizon, the horizon at this time was much larger than uh, this uh, one over the apple now that we see. Now, since uh, the horizon, we saw before that uh, if without inflation, the horizon would have been like this. Tiny, tiny, tiny with respect to the horizon we need. We need an horizon as big as this. Okay? So we can just neglect the contribution to the evolution of, to the horizon from the late time universe and just consider the contribution to the horizon from, from inflation because either this does the job or this cannot help. Okay? Um, so, okay, how much needs to be? Uh, so, we need the, the particle horizon. If you ask uh, how much corresponds this, this distance uh, 
in terms of the particle horizon that we need to have at the time of the CMB, it is uh, nothing but the scale factor at the time of the CMB times uh, um, uh, 1 over a, 1 over a0 a0. So this is the, the particle horizon that we need. Let me call it DL. Okay. DL is the particle horizon that we need. It is uh, the, take a certain physical distance, which is about the one over both square, divided by A0 and multiplied by A. It tells you what is the physical distance that the points that now are physically one far, one able far apart were at the time of the same B. And this uh, must be uh, smaller than the particle horizon due to the inflation, which is uh, the A of TL, the, the scale factor at the time, says the integral during inflation from the beginning of inflation and the end of inflation of uh, uh, dt over a. Let's see. But notice that, uh, again, uh, this number uh, it, this can be done trivially. And we'll give you, so this gives me, this gives you equal uh, ATL over a end of inflation, h during inflation times e to the n. So, imposing that this is bigger than this means that n must be bigger than the log of a and h inflation over a0, a0. Now, if you see, again, here at uh, log, uh, you see, th this, uh, this condition will imply that n e was bigger than the log of a and over, over a in initia. So for, to set the curve to problem, we need the number of folding bigger than this log. And to solve the horizon problem, we get the number of folding bigger than the same log, apart from small corrections. Because uh, remember, these are exponential numbers, much bigger than the ratio of, the, of these things. So to very good approximation, the, the number of foldings that uh, fixes uh, the curve to problem also fix the horizon problem. So but the nice that. Uh, an inflationary period, so just to summarize, this is the last thing I want to say in this class. Uh, we saw that uh, standard FRW cosmology with normal matter, uh, if we take the, the universe as it is now, it would have originated from an initial state which is very, very peculiar. It has an horizon problem and a curvature problem. A period of inflation, for example, m driven by a scalar field on top of a fair potential, can fix the problem. If it lasts, because it gives the W equal minus 1, which is exactly what we need to fix this problem, and the only condition that it lasts long enough, we have a number of foldings of order 60 or so, which is, means that the epoch of inflation must last 60 Hubble times during it, where Hubble is the Hubble rate during inflation. OK, so this was what motivated inflation. I will not discuss uh, in this kind of model the, the density perturbation, because I think Daniel will do it. Uh, in the next class, uh, uh, I, I will introduce a more general formula. It's because this tells us that inflation must be there. This motivates this. And uh, in the next class, I will introduce uh, a, what many people call, consider a modern way to discuss inflation, which is uh, in this language of defective theory, where all, mod all possible ways of inflation are uh, described at the same time. OK. Uh, for Leonardo, and then of course there'll be also a discussion session, so we can ask more. But if there are a few urgent questions. Oh yeah, perfect. Think of it as an abstract. Uh, can is constant values of scalars? Uh, I didn't understand. So is constant values of the scalars allowed? Large values of the scalar are allowed. Constant values, like independent of size. In principle, from what I discussed yesterday, yes, we mean a stack on top of the potential. Yeah. There are two problems with that. First, uh, naively, if we stack on top of the potential, it will never end. Inflation. Uh -huh. Okay. However, you put, you put, okay, this uh, I will discuss at the very end, uh, or if I have time, which I probably not, uh, which is called eternal inflation, because uh, actually it could quantum jump to the uh, still end. So you could say, okay, but then let me give a very, very small speed. Maybe in very, very small. So what rules out the possibility is that density perturbations created by the disinflationary field will be too large. 
So the limit and the speed that really comes from from this observation that the intensity of rotation is not Thanks, thanks. Thanks for the question. One question. Any other questions, comments? Uh, okay. Um, well, let's thank you another again. And. Uh,